In this video, we're gonna figure out mathematically how to calculate the image distance and the image height when the object height, the object distance, and the focal length of a mirror is given to us. So mathematically speaking, we are giving the values of HO, the height of the object, object distance U, and, and the focal length F. So these, these things are, these things are given to us. So these are given. Given these, we need to figure out the image distance and the image height. So we need to find out what V is and what HI is. And so if you think about it carefully, this looks like a math problem. It's no longer a physics problem because you can treat, it, treat this whole thing like some kind of a geometrical figure where some of these sides are given to us and we need to find some unknown sides. All right, so let's do that. So let's focus on what we want to calculate. We need to calculate V, that is this distance, and HI, that is this length over here. And notice what's given to us. Let's focus on these two things. HO is given to us, and U, that is this distance, is given to us. Can we somehow connect them? That's the question. Can we somehow connect this distance and this height, this distance and this height? If you look at this figure carefully, and in fact, if you look at these two triangles carefully, we can figure it out. So let me, let me highlight those triangles. We're focusing on these two triangles because their sides are what we are interested in. Now if you look at them carefully, notice that they are similar triangles. Let's see how. Notice that they have one of these angles equal because they're both 90 degrees. They also have these angles over here equal. The reason they are equal is because one is the angle of incidence and one is the angle of reflection. And laws of reflection tell us that this should be equal to that, which means the other angle, the other angle should also be equal, making these two triangles similar to each other. And what is the speciality of similar triangles? Well, their sides are in the same proportion. Therefore, by looking at these two triangles, we can write down that the height of the image, that is this side, divided by this side, the height of the object, divided by this side, that has to be equal to the ratio of these two sides have to be equal to ratio of any other two sides. That has to be equal to ratio of this side and this side. You get that? This side is V. So it has to be equal to ratio of V divided by this side, U. And so notice what we have done. We have found a connection between the quantities that we want. But we're not done yet. Because notice that HI and V are both unknowns and we have one equation with two unknowns, we can't solve it. So we could say, well, this is one equation for us. If we can get another equation in HI and V, and then we are done. So to find the second equation, let's, let, let's just get rid of this triangles first. All right, now to find the second equation, we're going to bring F into the picture because F is also given to us. And what I want you to do now is pause the video and see if we can come up with a set of similar triangles, just like what we did over here, but which has F as one of its side length. Just look at, just, just, just explore that. All right, let's see. F is over here, this side, PF, that is the focal length F, all right? And now you can see there's one triangle over here, a little bit weird looking, which has that side, but that's weird because it doesn't have a right angle. We want right angle triangles, okay? Uh, however, you can look at this triangle over here, can you see this triangle over here has the F or as one of its length? And that triangle will be similar to this triangle over here. So let me highlight those. Again, we are focusing on these two triangles because they are similar to each other, as we'll see, and their side lengths are what we are interested in. That's the whole idea, okay? So notice that this is right angle, which we already know. This is also a right angle, right? This is also a right angle. And then notice these angles are equal to each other because they're vertically opposite, which means the other angle will also be the same and therefore we can now say these two are similar triangles. But before we proceed, we might have one question. We were like, wait, 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 this is a curve. That's not a triangle. This is not a straight line. It's a curve. So how can we treat it as a, as a triangle? Well, here's where we need to understand one approximation. This is a spherical mirror, which means it's a part of a sphere. But look at where the center of curvature is. And so if you were to draw that complete sphere, 
you can see a part of that entire, uh, I'm only drawing a circle, but imagine it's a sphere. That sphere is humongous compared to the part that we have chosen, right? So, and whenever you take a big sphere and you concentrate on a very tiny patch of that, we can pretty much treat it to be a flat, land or we can treat it to be a flat patch just like just like how earth is huge it's a big sphere but when you look at a small patch of earth it looks like flat so similarly we can assume that this mirror this curved part of the mirror is pretty much flat because it's a small part of that entire sphere all right so hopefully that justifies our claim that you know we, we can approximate this to be a straight line and therefore we can do the same thing that we did here. We're gonna exploit the properties of similar triangle. Their ratios are in the same proportion. Again, I want you to pause the video and see if you can write that yourself. All right, let's see. So if you take this side, hi, hi, and divide by this side, well, what's this side equal to? Hmm, well, if you look carefully, that is nothing but ho, all right? So that is ho. That will be equal to this side divided by this side. Well, what is this side equal to? Hmm, that's not something that we want, right? But we can convert it into something that we want. Notice this is equal to V minus F. Look at that carefully. So that is V minus F divided by this side, which is F. And you may be wondering, if you're wondering, why are we not taking the other side? Well, that's not what, because the hypotenuse is what we're not interested in, right? We, we are only interested in the sides which are over here. And that's why we're not taking the hypotenuse. All right, and so this now forms our second equation. Because notice, we now have two equations with two unknowns, and so we can solve it, all right? So again, it's a great time to pause the video and see if you can solve this yourself. I'll give you a small clue. We'll first try to connect V, U, and F. Only an equation containing V, U, and F. Can you, tr can you try that? Again, another clue, look, the left-hand side is the same, which means the right-hand side must also be equal to each other. Just go ahead and try. All right, let's do that. Let's make some space for the algebra. The geometry is pretty much done. All we have to do now is algebra over here. So since the left-hand side is equal, we could say the right-hand sides are also equal to each other. And therefore, we could now say that V divided by U has to be equal to V minus F, V minus F divided by F. And strictly speaking, we have gotten what we wanted. This is the only unknown and U and F are known to us. So we have found out the relationship, but you know, this looks pretty ugly. So we're gonna, you know, we're gonna try and make it a little bit pretty. And so let's get rid of the denominator. Let's cross multiply. What would we get? We'll get V times F, V times F equals, if you multiply that over here, you get UV, UV minus UF, minus U times F. In fact, I've made it even more ugly. <laughs> so what we're trying to do is come up with an equation that makes it, it becomes easier for us to remember because we don't want to derive this over and over again. And to do that, one last step we'll do is we'll divide this whole thing by UEF. And we'll see that we end up with a very simple equation now, at least at a simple looking equation. All right, so if we divide the whole equation by UEF, notice V and F cancel over here. And so you end up on the left-hand side with one over U that equals to, notice UV cancels over here, so you end up with one over F minus one over V over here. And if we do one last manipulation to this equation, we'll add one over V on both sides, we'll end up with the grand, grand equation that we're wanting. One over F equals, one over F equals one over U plus one over V. And there we have it. Given F and U, we can now calculate the image distance from this. And if we substitute that image distance in equation one, we can now calculate what the height of the image is. So there it is. But one problem is that this is not a general formula. So I don't want to box it as of now because we only derived this for a concave mirror and that too for real images. What if the image is virtual? What if you're dealing with a convex mirror? Are this, will the same formula hold good? Maybe they will change, right? So in another video, we'll see how to make a general formula which can be used for all the cases, convex, concave, real, virtual, whatever you want, we can use it. So we'll do that in another video.